Hello, welcome to the channel and welcome back to Resurrect Autos HQ. Today, guys, it is Monday morning. I hope you all had a great weekend. Um, it was a really nice chilled out one for me. So back on it, another week, all fresh, ready to go. So today, we're going to start with the Fiat 500. We're going to bring it in, take it up, strip it down and have a look uh, see what damage is behind the bonnet, the wing, um, and the bumper. So yeah, it's going to be um, should be an interesting one to see what you know why they've categorised that as a cat s um, on the front end. Is it something really stupid and simple, or is it actually chassis leg damage, um, inner wing damage? You know, is it is it kind of that kind of damage, or is it really sort of? Really stupid and simple, but we'll get into it. We'll find out. Uh, I'll bring her in, and um, yeah, we'll uh, just get stuck into it. I'm, I'm looking forward to it actually, just getting stuck into that Fiat 500 um, and rip, you know, stripping it all down and just see how far we can get today. Um, you never know. Um, but I haven't got, I've got a couple of bits, but I haven't got, you know, all the bits and pieces that we need to do that car. So. I've still got to source some parts. I'm trying to get them in colour, to be honest with you. I'm a painter. Uh, he's away. He's still got the Vauxhall Corsa, but um, he's, he's actually gone on holiday. So I said, just fine. Just, yeah, just, just sort it out when you come back. But so I'm trying to find it in colour. So we ain't got to take, we ain't got to worry about that um, part of it. He just couldn't get the, the, the Corsa finished in time, really. Um, it's just one of them things, I understand. So, um, yeah. But... <clears throat> Yeah, parts in colour would be great. So, let's jump into it, guys. Let's bring the Fiat in and let's start ripping this apart. So, let's do this. Right, guys. So, she's in. Um, yeah, so we can start stripping it down now and then getting, you know, getting, getting in there, see what, see what the damage is like behind all this. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that there's no chassis leg damage as, as such. Uh, no twists or bends or nothing like that. Probably a little tweak. You can just see it down there, probably just at the top. Normal stuff um, <clears throat> when it comes to this kind of thing. Whether or not that is because it's a cat S, don't know. Could have been the inner wing um, behind here, but it hasn't been stripped down. So for them to, yeah. It's very, you, you can just see it through there, but it don't look like it's been you know damaged at all but you just don't know guys do we <laughs> we just don't know so i think let me um <clears throat> let me set you up let's get cracking bonnet wing bumper and then we can have a good look um around the car um for for the actual you know the actual damage really to see if there's any damage behind it take the wheels off um and really go at it yeah let's let's give it a good old strip down um and let's see what is going on so let's do this.
Right, guys, so there you go. It's all been stripped down, um, apart from obviously the slam panel and crash bar and stuff like that, but, you know, we'll get into that in a minute. But I just wanted to see behind, basically. Um, and I'll be honest with you, there's not really a great deal um, wrong over here. That obviously looks a bit squashed and a bit sort of flat and that, but I think it's the shape. I'm looking through um, this one here. And the shape of the inner wing is kind of like that. Um, the even even the wing bracket, sort of this this lower wing, um, this bracket here that goes from the uh, inner wing to the to the wing itself, and then that that goes to the bumper. It it's pretty much straight. I'll be honest with you. I've seen them, I've seen them much much worse than that. Much much worse. Um, so I think with a little bit of playing around with this, I think we're, we're, gonna, be, we're gonna be all right. I've, I've started to whack it in here, you can see it there. So I've just wanted to whack it in just to see, if, you know, just to play around with it a little bit, but I think it's all right. I think that's, you know, I was worried about, you know, we'd have to change the inner wing part of it and, and, and cut all this away and, and do all that bit. But I just, yeah, I just, I think it's all right. I've got to check these wires. I've really got to check these wires and these hoses, these pipes. Just got to make sure that, you know, we're getting no problems there. There's no lights on the dash. There's no warning uh, error codes or anything like that at all. Um, this is still holding. I've got to check to make sure that it, it sort of works, the washer jet. So, yeah, um, I'm quite surprised. I'm honestly quite surprised that I thought that was going to be, I think it's going to be worse than that. So, I think with a little bit more sort of messing around, maybe just bring it in. I might just whip off that other wing um, and then compare it or just undo a few bolts from the top so I can pull it away um, so we can then compare it. Because if I start... Oh, what I don't want to do is, is, on the other side, get into cutting all this away. So, yeah, I'll probably just undo this top section and that sort of well, as much as I can um, and then pull it away a little bit just so I can see um, down there. But... Yeah, I'm honestly, I'm honestly quite shocked, really, about that. I thought I was going to be completely destroyed, pushed, squashed, everything. Like, you know, um, like that inner bit there was going to be sort of damaged. But it ain't. I think the reason why it's cat ass, because they couldn't see that there, the assessors. They, that was all covered up. They could only see that, which was, which was down the gap. So I think that they've done it because of this. Um, and you can see that... This corner here has gone in, so that needs tapping back out. Um, but apart from that, like the bottom one and these two here seem okay. So this is where obviously that it's had most of the hit, I reckon. Um, and the crash bar, you can see the crash bar, that's got to be changed. Cannot leave that on there like that. So, yeah. I'm quite shocked really, I'm surprised. Um, so, but yeah, there we go. I think the next thing to do is get this front end off. Let's get the slam panel off, uh, the rad pack, the air conditioning. The air conditioning has already been removed. Um, that was removed um, last Thursday by the mechanic at the end. He's got a machine that he can use. I'm not allowed to use my one, but he can use his one and he just, he just pulled it out and then that's it. Um, I can remove it. There's always going to be a little bit of gas comes out, but, you know, it is, it is all being recovered by the machine that he's got. Uh, so, yeah, I want to get this front end off. This, because this ain't, this ain't actually leaking. Um, he, he pulled a lot of aircon out this, out of this system as well. So, that's not leaking either. That's not been, even though this is, you know, come down here like that. But it looks like it's, you know, over time that's sort of come away. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's continue, set you up and let's start stripping this front end off and let's see what is going on. So let's continue guys and let's do this. I want to look at that, that chassis leg. So let's get it all stripped and let's find out what's going on. Let's do this.
Right, okay, so guys, this is about an hour and a half later um, than this that last bit of time lapse you just saw because I did go to the breakers and I managed to get some bits and pieces um, from them, which is good. But I just want to quickly show you because I haven't showed you the actual chassis leg uh, bent in a minute. And you can see that it's just there, look. So that's going to need to sort of tap him back just on this top corner here. That's, that's definitely not sort of been hit forward. Uh, that's, the chassis leg's definitely not been touched and hit forward. It's just that top that's kicked over, you know? Because I've checked all around the bracket, the back and that, and it is just a, a, a kink on this front end. So, yeah. Um, I did actually remove the bottle uh, because I know I could get a, a better swing with the hammer um, from the other side. I did try it with my slide hammer that I've got for doing my welding. Um but it just, it's not, it ain't got the, sorry to be crude, but it ain't got the balls to do it, you know? I tried to hook it through there, come across like that, and then give it a tug and a, and a, and a pull and a whack on that slide. But it hasn't got the, yeah, it hasn't got the, it needs to be whacked from the other side. Maybe if I get someone to help me, um, if anyone's around, I might be able to, if I hold it like this and pull it, and give it a few slide hammer hammer wax while someone um, wax the top corner or something. Do you know what I mean? If, we, if two of us have a go at that, it might, might be a lot easier. So I will see if anyone's around that can give me a quick hand to do that. Um, so that's that done. I'll show you the bits I've got. So this is the old one. And I went and picked up a new slam panel, well, second-hand slam panel. It's not new. Um, and a top crash bar because that crash bar... I wanted to change. The lower one's all right. That's pretty good. No problem there at all. It's just that there, look. So, you know, it cost me, what that cost me that crash bar? 25 quid for the crash bar and then 50 quid for the panel. Um, and it's, <laughs> there's nothing there. There's nothing in the panel. But luckily enough, my Rad Pack um, air conditioning unit uh, is all holding fine. So I don't need to change that. I'd rather use as much as the original as I can, because then it's the original parts that I'm using. So yeah, you know, and the, and the fans it spins without no problem at all. Um, so it's just a case of swapping over the whole section really. Um, but yeah, got really lucky with that. And you can see that obviously the, the panel's here, the slam panel's here, and where it got bent up. You can see it, you know? So, and none of the rest of the panel, apart from obviously the top wings, uh, are bent um, a little bit up like that. But that's just, you know, that's, that's just normal for that kind of sort of impact damage, really. But, yeah, there we go. Um, I have also noticed something else whilst I was, I don't know if you, yeah, I think you <laughs> saw me doing it. But there was like, you see all the dirt inside this foot, this, this wheel wheel. wheel. Um, it is everywhere. So I just started to sort of scratch it off, scrape it off and get it cleaned up a little bit better. It was terrible, much, much worse than this. Um, and I'm doing my usual you know, checks and stuff. Brake pads are pretty low, so we've got to change the brake pads on this. Discs are absolutely fine. No, well, it's a slight, very, very slight, like minimal, mil at the most um, on those discs, so they can stay. We'll do the pads. Uh, but also, I've noticed is this here, which is the lower, even a little bit. So can you see that this lower wish, this lower wishbone here, got this, this um, rubber, uh, sorry guys, I'm losing my words again. <laughs> it's because I'm thinking about loads of bit, bits and pieces, but this basically shouldn't be touching the bottom part. It's dropped uh, in the rubber itself, the rubber housing in the middle, it, that, that metal piece has dropped and now it's going to be hitting and banging uh, on this. So, is that was that part of the accident? Who knows? Um, so, but anyway, I'm going to change it. So I'm going to change the lower wishbone and get that done. Um, but yeah, let me come back to you. Someone's coming to the door. Stay there. Sorry, guys. Someone come to the door. So I had to quickly stop filming again. Um, if I put the door shut, they're 
they, they more or less probably just leave me alone because they know I'm filming. Uh, they'll know what I do around here, so it's um, it's not that. It's just that they kind of leave me alone um, if the doors are shut. But if the doors are open, they kind of get <laughs> just come over. But this is fine. This is all good. Um, so, yeah, so that's what I was saying. I've definitely got to replace this lower arm, I think. Um, just, you know, what... I'm at this point, it's a lot easier because with these lower arms, you've got to take this 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 lower um, support bracket, uh, chassis, lower chassis legs, we call it, support bracket. Um, so that's got to come off to get to the bolt, which, is, which holds this part of the um, wishbone in. So whilst we're at this point, it just makes sense to do it, you know. I, I don't want to... What I don't want to do is I don't want to put it all back together and then take it to the MOT or drive it down the road and, and go boom, bang, bang. You can hear... The worst thing about, obviously, you know, having this kind of thing is that once I've done it and people want to take it for a test drive and I insist that every time I sell a car, take it for a drive. I insist they take it for a drive because I don't want them to take it for a drive and then they feel something knocking, banging, and then they come back to me and say, oh, no, this, this is happening, that's happening, I'm not happy. Do you know what I mean? Whatever. I don't want that. I'd rather pre preempt that and, and, and solve the problem before. So instead of putting it all back together... I, I'm going to do that wishbone. Um, it's probably going to be in tomorrow's video. I've not got enough, enough time today. I have got some time to carry on, so we will carry on for the moment. Um, also, I'm going to change the hinges on the um, the bonnet because I, I just don't trust this side. That side may have a little twist, a little donk, but it ain't, you know what I mean. It's not that bad. But that side, where where the hit was, um, the hit was here, and it hit was it was hit on the bonnet here. I can't trust that hinge. So it's for, I think they're 20 quid for a set of hinges, second hand. So let's get, get some second hand hinges. Let's whack those on. And then that, that's, um, that just uh, eliminates that um, part of it. So yeah, so far, so good, guys. Um, I am going to do the service. I want to drop the oil, uh, oil filter, whip that out. Air filter, whip that out. Um, and yeah, just keep going. Um, but I'll probably now, if I've got time now, I'll do it. Um, and we'll, we'll whip off that lower wishbone and we'll get another one. So do as much as I can. Plus, obviously, I've got to put all that um, rad pack and that into this one. Um, so I think the process of, process of it really is, is that lower wishbone. I'll tell you what, let me give the company a call. Let me see if they can run me out one quickly um, and the service parts and all that. Let me, let them get, let me, let's see if they can get that pretty quick. If they can, um, normally they can within the hour. So if they can, let's crack on with this. Let's get this wishbone out, and let's 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 crack on, guys. Let's do it. So, whew, I'm shattered already. But it is Monday, and uh, it takes me a couple of days, maybe Monday, Tuesday, bang, and then I'm into swing of it. But um, yeah, I'm shattered already. But good progress so far. But let me set you up. Let's carry on. Let's do this.
Right, guys, let's get in there. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you can see, or well, you've just been seeing me do a lot of bits and pieces. We've dropped the oil. Oil filter is off. Um, I've taken off the um, bonnet hinges, so they're off as well. We'll get those replaced. Um, I've taken off the wishbone. This is the old one. This is the new one. Yeah. I don't think they're... It's not bent. It's not twisted or nothing like that. It's just the um, bushings popped out. It's the only thing with it. Um, so, but I've done these... I've done the actually done these before... Um, for, for another uh, Fiat 500, uh, I think it was a red one that I did actually, I did on the channel as well, so yeah, they, they absolutely pop out, it's just a wear and tear part, it's just a rubber uh, part, there's nothing you could do with it apart from change, change it, so that's what I've done, um, I've got the oil as well, this over here, so we'll whip this one in, um, and the oil filter, we'll put that on as well, so yeah, uh, but I had to take the leg out of the um, this this leg here had to come out because a bolt goes through there into the one side of the wishbone, which is a bit of a pain, really. Um, I have actually checked the brake pads, guys. I just I took that caliper up and had a look, um, and the the pads are all right. You know, I'm going to leave them as they are. They're just over at least half of on, of the pad what's left. So definitely, definitely not worth changing. Um, just kind of throwing money away, really, if I change them. So we'll leave them as they are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so let's get the new wishbone in place. Get all that back in place. Put the um, lower arm back in. Um, and just continue today. See what, see how far we can get. So, yeah. But before we do, I'll continue, guys. I just want to quickly say a big um, thanks to, to Dave. Um, he just popped over, bought me a cup of tea and a baking sandwich, um, and just, yeah, just popped me another chat. And he did mention um, about bringing his son uh, in for a work experience for his school. Basically, I think it's a couple of days uh, for a couple of weeks um, in July. I think it's going to happen. And I said, yeah, of course, if he wants to come in, um, you know, it'll be part of the, <laughs> it'll be part of the resurrect show, um, you know, <laughs> as long as he's all right on camera. Not that I want him to stand there and sort of talk on camera, because he probably won't, but at least you can see him doing bits and pieces um, around on the cars. But I think it'd be, yeah, just a nice little work experience. Um, yeah, so Thomas is going to come in. Um, you'll see him probably uh, July-ish sort of time. Um, and, yeah, it'll be, it's, just a, it's just a nice a little work experience for someone. Um, and, yeah, Dave asked me to... Uh, if I could, if I could take him on, take him in here for a couple of couple of days a week, um, so yeah, that's just. I'm always. I used to always take on uh, YTS trainees and, and and trainees like that. I used to always train um, the youngs, the youngsters, and that of trades and bits and pieces. So I'm used to having people around uh, doing that kind of thing. You just got to, you know, you got to treat them really, really um, nicely. I'm always like that. I'm never sort of um, you know bossy or nothing like that. I don't expect him to do too much. And I don't want him to do too much, to be honest with you, because not that I don't trust him, but because uh, I don't know him. But it's a fact that um, y y you can't push him at that age. You've really got to sort of, you know, gradually work him in because otherwise it puts him off for life really about working. So, yeah, something to look forward to, guys. Uh, we've got a, uh, yeah, we've got a, <laughs> a um, uh, in July that's going to happen. So, yeah, looking forward to that. So, yeah, Thomas will be coming in very, very soon. But for now... Let's crack on uh, with this Fiat 500. Let's get the w lower wishbone on, uh, get the bar back on, do as much as we can. Uh, oil filter, put that on. Um, the actual or air filter was good on this one as well. I'm not changing that either. I'll show you it. It's a bit dirty on the edge, but the actual condition of it, and it's a Bosch, is really, really good. Um, so... I don't think it's worth changing that. Again, uh, you know, it's not blocked up. It, it looks... It's good condition. It's not, don't get me wrong. It's not brand new, brand new. But it does look like it's in good condition. So I'm not going to change it. It's just no point throwing money away uh, on that. So, yeah. Let's, uh, let's go for the wishbone. And let's go for the lower arm. And we'll continue uh, with this Fiat 500. So let's do this.
Right guys, so the progress, as you can see, a nice new lower wish. So yeah, um, you can see when I put the um, my jack and a bit of wood up against there, it's because I want to put pressure on this, because obviously if you if you put it on the ground, it pushes it up and it's easier to push push that lower up. But if you get a jack and then put it on a bit of timber and push it up, it, it pushes the butt the bar through to make sure it's in the right position. Um, otherwise, it's not actually quite, it won't. When I first done it, that bit at the top there wasn't even showing. So you can, I know that it won't right through. So as I've done the jack, bang, it just pops right through. And then you do it up whilst it's holding there and then let go of the jack and that's it, it's in the position. So that's done. Um, done the oil filter, that's now in place, new one. I've put two litres of oil um, in the engine at the minute. And I've left the third one uh, because I, I, you know, I want to get it running, but I don't want to get it running until I've got the front end on the water and all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to leave that for a minute, but there's enough oil for the moment. Um, also put this in place, but I haven't done it up. See how loose it is. Now, the reason why I did that, I've put the bolts in. They're all there, secure, but it's not, in, it's not done up. Because what you've got to realise is that if I do it up and it's over here, all right, that might be in the wrong position for the front slam panel to fit. You know, if I do it up here, there, I could, do, I could be doing it up any, any other position and to, to actually be, to get it in the right position is, would be, yeah, really lucky. <laughs> so I keep them loose, put the front panel on, then put that in place. And then once the front panel's on in the position, then you put that in the right position, do it up and that's it. If that makes sense. <laughs> so yeah, but that's what I wanted to quickly explain what I was doing there. I've put the uh, air box back on. That's done because it's easier to get to the bolts at the bottom uh, whilst there's nothing in the front end in your way. So that's done. So we're really pushing along with this car already, I've got to be honest. Um, so yeah, I've also spoke to a breakers um, today and they said to me they've just got in a Fiat 500 in white. Um, so I'm hoping that this gonna, it's going to match the colour. If it does, I'm going to be able to get a wing, bumper, and bonnet in colour. So, yeah. I'm going to go and have a look at this afternoon. Take that wing with me, the old one. Take it with me. And then now I can compare the colours um, to see if it matches. But, yeah. If that's really, really lucky if that's the case. Um, that means we ain't got to take it to a paint shop uh, to get painted. It can just go back together and then job done. So, yeah, we are really, really moving along now. Let me swap this over. So I'm going to swap all that to that. Um, and then that way, put that back in place. Um, and then, yeah, then probably that's going to be the end really um i haven't really got any time i might have some time to get this handle off actually you can see that the seal is crappy here so someone's basically tried to glue that on and to keep it there they're trying to glue it in place <laughs> which is mad um i can't remember exactly the process i'm sure uh, Mr. Love 500, Paul is watching me going, oh, Mark, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. <laughs> I don't know who he's going to say, he's going to think that, but I think it's door card off, um, if I remember rightly. And it's, is it that bolt there? Let's get the end off. Oh, I can't remember. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. Don't worry, I'll figure it out. <laughs> if one starts commenting, let me know how to do it. Uh, I think you pop this cover off. That cover pops off. There's a screw behind there. There's screws behind that. Um, we'll have this door card off. Get that handle sorted out. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to get it to it today. We'll see. I'd rather get the front end um, pushed along a little bit further. So let's crack on with that. Um, also, I've got to get help. The mechanic's going to come over and help me just pull that out a little bit um, and see if I want to sort of tap it back in place but it's difficult because you can't you can't get a good swing on that back side and that's why i took the bottle out you know the water bottle that's why i took that off because i can get a more of a, a swing on that there but if you if i'm pulling it and he's and he's tapping it it should it should help a lot so let's crack on yeah let me go and get let me start and get him quickly uh let's crack on with that let's see if we can get that done 
and then we can get this front end on. I'll set you up and let's do this. Right guys, well that didn't take long, did it? Um, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's all back together and it's right um, uh, slam panel, sorry. Sorry, I'm just trying to think of other things. Um, yeah, it's all, it's all back together, so that can be put on the car. Um, I have noticed that this side seems a bit sort of tweaky. Um, so I'm going to have to sort of, yeah, I don't know really, just sort of, he didn't mention anything about that when I picked it up. So, I don't know if that's, that's probably been damaged in storage or what. And I said to him, did you, what, did you take it off the car? No problems, no no accident. He said, no, no, just he took it off the front end of a car and it wasn't it wasn't hit at the front at all. Um, so, I don't know. Probably, I'm, I might be able to spend it back a bit, but that's that's not straight, really. They're not really straight, to be honest with you. It's not like a flat bit of metal. They're like sort of up and down and a bit wavy. But it definitely like there's a few creases there. So like this this crease here is, is is there. You can see it's there, and it's is there's one here. Um, it's it's this one here that I'm sort of looking at, and that that sh should be sh straight here. So maybe just, it is really flip flings like, like literally like I'm moving it like this. Look, so it is pliable. It's not nothing really structural. I don't think so. It's just a top bracket support. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll ever mess around with that and get that lined up. Much better than that anyway. The other thing um, we have actually pulled this chassis leg out now. Um, that is all straightened up. Um, he didn't want to sort of be on camera so i couldn't do any of the filming but you can, uh, you can see that I, you know we haven't really done whacked about at all really um and we've used this straight edge to go across um and bring it across here the only thing that is hit is slight gap there see that very slight gap so i'm going to tap it from this side and just tap it there a little bit and that should just knock that little gap out but yeah, really, really, you know, that's, that's that's where it is. I don't think the top's got to go over or the bottom. I'll have to have a little play with that, see what I think. Maybe it is the top one's got over a tad. But yeah, I think whack that in there a little bit, tap that back a little bit, and that should make it spot on. So yeah, there we go. That is all straightened. So the front panel can go back on now. Um, but I'll have a little play with that. And then we'll put the front panel on. We'll line that up and start sort of building it back together, I think. So let me set you up, guys. Let's carry on. Let's get this slam panel on. Um, let me do that first. And then I'll put this panel on. <laughs>
Right, okay guys. So, as you can see, slam panel and rad pack is back in place. Um, yeah, not quite sure of the position at the minute. Uh, I've only put one bolt in each side. I want to get the um, wing bonnet bumper all sort of lined up in, in place um, before I actually sort of do them up tight. Um, yeah. So it's kind of where I've got to leave it for the minute until I get the other parts. And I'm going to go off in the minute and have a look at the other parts where the guys just spoke. To, I just spoke to the guy about. Going to have a look at them, see if they're going to be any good. And then, because he hasn't even taken it off the car yet. The car is, he said the car is just turned up today. So they haven't even stripped the parts off. It's just sitting there. So it's ideal, really. Go up there, have a look at the condition, um, have a chat with them and see what I can get off of them on when it comes to the car. It'd be, I'd, it'd, honestly, it'd be great if I could just get the colours, the parts in colour, bang, straight on. Um, no paint shop required. Uh, <laughs> that's the plan. But you never know what's going to happen. So I'm going to get up there and have a look. Um, that's going to be the end of today's video, guys. I've done absolutely loads to this today. Uh, really, really had a good push on. Uh, you can see, you can just see how, how much you can get done with, especially having a lift. It's so much easier. Just up and down, like you ain't got to, you know, worry about sort of on jacks on on axle stands or moving the car about. It's just yeah, it's so much easier on this with this lift. So much quicker. So yeah, I think I've done enough today. I believe um, so. I'm going to wrap it up there. Guys, I really appreciate the support. And don't forget, drop me a comment if you've got anything to say on today's video. Um, and also, don't forget, if you haven't already, follow me on Instagram, where you'll see sneak peeks of little bits and pieces, um, what I'm doing about the cars I'm getting and on the channel and bits and pieces like that. So, yeah. Um, thanks very much, guys. Really appreciate, appreciate the support. And I'll see you in the next one.